tina koto, tina koto, tina koto, rangatira ma, namhi nui, kia koe hori, um, Stacey ma, um, thanks very much for the welcome. Uh, I mihi ana ki nga mana whenua o whangarei, nga mihi nui, kia koto, kia koto katoa, nga mihi nga mihi. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that travelled, made the effort, got through that rain, and it is the hui that's been waiting to happen, and it's happened. So I just acknowledge uh, the travelling, um, the circumstances that everyone's come to join us here today. Um, unfortunately, Nick Waipara is on his way, but not joining us. So Vicky will fill in on the um, important parts around the science. So you all know, you know New Zealand forests, our nahiri, are the, are the lungs and life of our country. You know, they truly are. They're filled with tonga. Um, they're filled with tonga that provide a wealth of benefits. Um, but sadly, they are under threat. Um, you know that. I know that. And the government, um, MB in fact, um, recognised this and created a strategic science platform under urgency to accelerate, to accelerate the work already being done by many by government agencies, by councils, um, by research providers, by Māori, hapu, iwi, interest groups, collectives. There was a lot of mahi going on, but it needed to be accelerated, and critical solutions, critical research was required uh, to generate long-term solutions and inform the development of tools and approaches to counter kauri dieback and rest. In 2019, um, so only four years ago, Narako Takitaki, or NRT, was established, and many of you will know this, was established as a four-year strategic science, uh, strategic research platform, funding new solutions for management of the two diseases uh, for Kodi dieback and myrtle rust. The program was developed by many, you know, a group of approach, researchers, mana whenua, stakeholders, agencies, and communities, and is administered through Biological Heritage National Science Challenge, now for all the our vision, as it states there, the Modi of the Kodi and native myrtle species are safeguarded, sustained and enhanced for our tamariki and mokopuna. Really important for our future generations, the efforts that we go to now. The task is large, it is hugely large. Uh, the expectations are high. And collectively, with many partners, many of you are here, many of our researchers are here, we are grappling with key questions, undertaking research and science, to meet the obligations and requirements set for us by um, government under um, two groups at the time, Strategic Science Advisory Groups, now called the Knowledge Advisory Group, of <coughs> uh, respective science plans. They mapped out the direction um, of the research we had to embark on. <coughs> So NRT is strategically focused on creating impact in three areas, and you'll see them there on the slide. Whakamana, Te Ake, and Whakahaut. Through seven um, strategic thematic research programs, and importantly, what's not reflected on this slide, uh, but many will know about this, is Whakahorana, um, supporting architecture or pō. Um, really important in terms of our engagement and empowering the work that we do, uh, scientists and mana whenua. Constructing the right teams to deliver with co-leadership, supporting and bringing together world views is absolutely important. Partners and communities are working together, delivering over 40 research projects um, through a co-leadership model with approximately 160 researchers across 25 organisations, uh, working in direct partnership with many communities, iwi, hapu, schools, NGOs, industry and interest groups. And collectively, over 200 outputs have been generated thus far from this work. 200 outputs. Uh, but there's much, much more to do. There's many lessons, there's much knowledge to share. Uh, fortunately, Narako Tukitaki has until the 30th of March to help finalise those final stages of the research programmes, uh, assist with research delivery and knowledge uptake for impact. So NRT is focused and committed uh, to having an enduring impact. There are many areas to celebrate, many learnings, um, and much to share, much to share, translate to support the modi of our Kodi and Mutasia species. Through the right teams working in partnership, embedded with communities and teams, NRT has accelerated 
for strategic research. We have modelled and ingrained an approach, a collective way of working that is optimised, a coordinated national effort. We, as we aspired um, to this collective effort, and I think the, the audience here actually reflects that. There's a diversity of sectors, groups of people from across the country, so now I'm ahead um, to those that are involved. So our research is delivering science, data solutions, enabling Aotearoa New Zealand to more effectively manage and have solutions. Many of those researchers are here today, we'll hear from them. Uh, and, and there's opportunities to discuss their research. If you wish to follow up, do connect them with us. Do connect them with us. Vicky's now going to talk through um, Nick's slides, if she can, and I know there'll be one or two that she may skip through. Um, and then I'll come back just to conclude. Kia ora. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much everyone for coming along today, it's fantastic to see you all here. I'm Vicky Ganley and as we said I'm going to be talking first off about Phytophora Agatha Visitor and then I'll go into um, a virtual rust and in particular focuses on what we've been doing within Nara Kentucky. But I always like to start off with just making sure everybody's on the same page because there's people who have come into the Kotapa at different stages. So Phytophora Agatha Visitor affects coding even though it was first reported in the 1970s, was really in the early 2000s that we started to see um, the, the significant impact that we have. And unfortunately, it affects Cody of all ages and sizes. So what are we doing? Well, this is some of the fantastic, I'm just going to be doing some snapshot of some of the fantastic work. And there's also want to acknowledge it's not me who's done it, it's the researchers within Naraka Takitaki. And there's a lot of people in the room here. If you would like to find out more about something in particular and you don't know who's involved, uh, just let me know and I'm happy to put you in the direction. But I just want to start off with this, it was fantastic work. I think that that uh, news line really sums it up, saving a forest from Cody Diabat to Florida Māori. And um, hopefully we'll be hearing a little bit more about that today, but yeah, some, some great work in that space. Then sniffing, I'm also going to go super quick over them, just to give you a little bit of a taste. Matarama Māori framework for surveillance. And so in this particular uh, research project, we've been the team have been developing uh, map-based surveillance tools, and these are now being used operationally. I've uh, also been doing a lot of work into data sovereignty and the standards, which is part of an integrated intelligence platform. And then also at the moment, they're working on proof of absence models, so we can figure out where or where not the pathogen might be, uh, based on, on our knowledge of where it is. Te Whakapōna has been a real highlight. Amy, come a bit closer. Te Whakahonga has been a real highlight. It's a novel approach to empower mana whenua and scientists to work together. And I know there will be a lot in the room who have been part of Te Whakahonga on this journey. In particular, it recognises as a framework for a partnership, but it recognises Māori sovereign rights and the cultural authority agreements are a key part of it as well. Uh, the next part will be a huge part of the social science area, and that's looking at empowering communities and collectives. And so I've got a web page at the bottom if anyone's interested to see what's we'll been done. But a huge number of different things, working in schools, uh, art displays, all different ways of connecting with the community <coughs> around these two uh, diseases, but in particular around Cody and virtual aura. And then finally for the, uh, the side of it is the creation, of, this is something just quite different from the others, and that's the creation of novel detection tools. So here we've got a microfluidic electrochemical device for detecting the zoo spores. Um, and it's a prototype, but that ability to develop things that allow everybody to be able to go out and test and find uh, without having to send it off to labs and the like. So just a prototype, but this is an example of some of the work that we're doing. Uh, I'm going to skip through this one because this is one of Nick's and I wasn't entirely sure what he was going to say, so i <laughs> short enough a little bit for you all. And I'm now going to go on to Osteoprexidia City I. So for this one here, it's quite a different story. It's a recent arrival, 2017, and affects myrtles. 
Uh, unfortunately, we're starting to see localised extinction of our most susceptible species in some regions. Uh, we also have, and that can be things like the Ramarama and potentially Sizigium, um, we also have huge concerns over some of our other susceptible natives, and unfortunately that includes the Hodokawa. It can affect all new plant parts, and that is the stems, leaves, the leaves, stems, flowers, and fruit, which means that you have an issue with the succession of these plant species too. So again, like with the Patrophora acanthogicida, I'm going to give you a quick zip through of some of the projects. So one of the ones that we've been doing is a rust risk prediction platform. I've got a website there. This is available for anyone to use. It's free, it's up on the web, you can do it yourself. And what it does, you put in um, the date that you wanted to look at and it provides these maps and it tells you in the date or the time frame that you've picked what the likelihood is that we have infection in New Zealand. So if it's red, it means it's high, green, it means it's low. And this is from last week and you can see the chance of infection occurring in New Zealand was really high, in particular for the majority of the North Island. But you can also go down to your little area, your, your local area, so you can put in, you can choose your weather stations, I've chosen uh, Whangarei here, and you can see uh, last week where that line is, uh, is previous week, and this is the forecasted. Last week we had optimal conditions for usual risk infection, and then, which isn't surprising with this big storm coming in, it's just dropped right away this week. And so these are fantastic tools that can be used to help with surveillance, figure out when you should go out, or potentially when you shouldn't be going out at all into the night year. Uh, then just a brief snapshot on some of the work that we're doing in risk assessment and ecosystem impacts. This is really critical to, to take that baseline information now, while the forests are still how they are, and we understand the connection between the trees that these diseases impact, but also what else is in there. And so some of the work that's been done in here is looking at risk assessments for a variety of different values, characterising the ecosystems, making sure we capture that information. And in particular, just was going to mention for Mutualis in particular, has been looking at the reproduction of infected and non-infected Ramarama. Timana Motuhake ana Kakano, the sovereignty of seeds, again something that's incredibly important with Mutualis. Uh, part of the work has been looking into developing Māori appropriate seed conservation techniques and then I really love the story about the seed banking drum kits and that's been partnering with Kew Gardens and getting these kits out into the community, allowing community members to collect, dry and store uh, seed from their own uh, local plants. And then we've got Tikanga driven conservation of Tonga species. Actually, to be honest, I love them all, to be honest, because this is another one I also love. Um, and Ngāti Kuri have two of the most endangered Mutasi species that we have in New Zealand, and so they've been putting together a research conservation plan, uh, already quadrupled the number they have of the Rata Moeho, um, and they also have a plan in place for Kahika uh, Rangipa. Um, and so it's fantastic to just see all of this conservation because it is incredibly important. And the final one that I'm just going to touch on is RNAi. Um, so this is some work that's actually been done in Australia at the moment, potentially a new tool to control myrtle rust. Um, you can see on the top one here, hopefully you can see, they're infected with myrtle rust and when you apply an RNAi, it can actually prevent infection and can also cure the plants once they've been infected. At this point, it's only lab-based, there's nothing going beyond that. Um, and through the work with another Kentucky Taki, we're working with the Australian colleagues to look at this as a potential tool. So I think that's me on my it is me on my final uh, on my whistle top store of some of the whistle top tour of some of the highlights that we've had in that I think that Close off, you know, as, as we final, uh, as we approach the final stages of Naraku Taki Taki, you know, with all this knowledge that's been generated, the learnings, the understanding, the, the lessons, you know, that approach that we spoke of, we must share it, we must ensure that it's implemented, that it's taken on. You know, over the next year, um, or just under, uh, our focus is really on sharing that knowledge, created the practical outcomes, outputs and tools with the collective supporting that uptake and impact and we hope that today, tomorrow and over the course of this summit that we're able to share some of that with you and follow up in terms of the connection of what's being produced.
through some of what Vicky beautifully outlines, and thank you for taking on um, Matt's work there. Um, yeah, ultimately, yeah, it is about restoring the Modi of our Nahiri. That's why we're here. Um, so I just want to acknowledge the efforts, the efforts of all those working on the ground, you know, supporting and undertaking the research. Um, yeah, many of you are here. Um, to the Mana Whenua Kaitiaki community collectives, councils, government agencies and industry, Namahi, Namahi Nui Kia Koto, Katoa. Um, let's continue our pursuit, continue that pursuit, and bring what we can to help the Kodi and Myrtles thrive for future generations. Kilda. Thank you.